Right, down here, Scooter Magazine, we're here with Daryl Taylor. We have just done a test ride on the new TT265. You'll be getting a view of that in a moment. Um, but in the meantime, we're just going to get a few words from Daryl to find out a bit of the inside information on the, uh, the back end of this, of what's going on in the workshop. So, Daryl, in terms of the 265 engine, I, uh, not so long back, test rode the 252 version of this and obviously we know it's been an ongoing development of yours for a number of years. Um, for the viewers, can you explain the difference now between what I test rode before the 252 and this which you would conceive you know, to be the finished version of the 265? Yeah, well the 252 was 62 stroke, 72 bar, which is already 6cc up on the original RV250 package with the 62 stroke that's in it. And we've now taken that further up to a 65 millimeter stroke and that 65 mil stroke gets us up to 265cc on the cubic capacity. As a result of doing that, we've uh, ended up with a bigger engine, um, cubic capacity, because sometimes the guys down the pub want to be able to quote that they've got a bigger engine. And as much as some customers, if they've read the stats properly and they've read the horsepower figures and they've read the dyno graphs and the torque results and actually read these things, they would probably more than be at be happy to accept a 252 but they sometimes just can't get over the hurdle of the fact that it's just not a 265. This was something we wanted to do and wanted to build as a bigger engine as a 265 and we've done it now. Got the 65 stroke crank in there used in combination with the uni engine casing and it's just it has effectively made it a bigger and a better motor. It's um, And how has that um, transferred onto graphs on horsepower has that made a difference in the horsepower so it, that you know through the mid-range yeah. or the top end or any differences there it has it's it's moved it's moved the whole of the power and the torque curve to the left of the graph you engage what power you've got earlier yep sooner and it's more of it horsepower and the torque lines up the curve are probably two and a half to three horsepower up compared to what they were previously that results in a total of around about 35 horsepower and about 26 and a half torque the big change is in the torque figure of the drive, in particularly at low revs at three and four thousand RPM. Three and four thousand RPM, it's it's quite huge is the increase that we're seeing in those areas. And in terms of people who have test ridden this engine, how many sort of you know, what's the quantity of people who've test ridden these particular final products and what's the feedback you've been been getting? Um the old two five two version, um we had a situation where we probably had about twenty five people come and tested it. Um, including yourself and um, lots of other guys who are in our local area and the intention behind that is, is that our viewpoint is, is that the opinions of one are very limited. Um, I used to race many years ago and what I want from an engine if I go out for a ride on one is I want something that's a little bit racy and a bit more kick in the pants and the other 19 guys might be um, of an older generation who have had the race engines in the past and now want something that's more refined and a bit more um, a bit a bit easier to to handle and you know they've, they've been through that all before in the past with the with the racy types. Moving on to 265 we've got more torque, you've got more horsepower, you've got more rideability um, an even greater ability to pull a taller gear and pull from low RPM and, and it still pull really really well. And so running through the spec of uh, of the engines then that, that, that are going out to customers, um, in terms of component lists what, what are we looking at from ignition and top end through to the bottom if you work through the engine what, what can you tell us about the, the components you're using? We run a Dunlop rear tyre, a SIP rim, um, a reinforced type Series 2 hub, um, We've got the uni engine casing, um, we've got a, a close ratio 5 speed gearbox, um, that couples up onto an LTH clutch, um, an iWIS chain and an LTH pull down tensioner, um, a high quality front drive sprocket, drive sleeve, cap and uh, components at that end. We've got a 65mm stroke crank driving through the centre of the case. Um, we've got the vape ignition which sits on the end of the crank on the mag side. On the mag side we've got either a uni, uni mag housing that we 
carry out some modifications to, um, although there's been limited availability at the moment. So in some instances, we're using sill uh, magos in still. Got the RB250 top end um, combined with the um, large mammoth head for the improved cooling. And then we've got my T-Type 265 specific exhaust system that uh, is coupled up to that also. On the inlet side, we use the uh, new CNC'd inlet manifold, which isn't on this engine that you've just taken the videos of. This is just another customer's yep. 252 motor, yep. um, not one of the 265 types. But we've got the CNC inlet manifold, and we've got the V-Type um, eight petal reed in there. Yep. And then the Makuni 35 carb combined with the um, rubber bellows and the air filter system that's on the end. In terms of performance, I mean, I've just been out and done a test ride on the 265. Yep. I was doing 15 miles an hour comfortably yep. in fifth gear around right. a housing estate. Yep. That's the same gear that I can then go on to accelerate through yep. and hit in excess of 80 miles an hour quite comfortably. Yep. Um, it gets there quickly enough. And if you want to um, get there any quicker, you have the option to yeah. to knock down a gear. Um, in terms of seeing that translate on, on the work you've done in the workshops and on the dyno, how would you describe the the working rev range of the engine and the power it puts out? Okay. Um, I think the important thing to remember in that is, is that quite often a, a nominal kind of gearing that is used within the industry is around about 10 mile per hour per thousand RPM. If you're riding down the road in fifth gear at 15 mile per hour, then you're sat at 1,500 RPM. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and the, that, the rev and counter that, did bear that yeah, out when I was looking at it. Yeah, and that is that is effectively tick over. Yeah. So if you turn your tick over down to 1,100 RPM, what would naturally happen is it would stall. So if you try to attempt to do 10 mile per hour, the engine would naturally stall because it can't even tick over without driving the wheel at that rev. Yep, so yep. that's why 15, 12 to 15 is kind of your limitation as to how low you can go. Yeah. And which is still quite remarkable that it does that anyway. <laughs> but um, so it'll go from 1500 RPM right up to the point that it makes its peak power at um, on the dyno graphs. And on the dyno graphs, it makes peak power at 6000 RPM, yep. which is very low in the rev range. Yep. But it's got this incredible ability to hold that peak power from 6,000 right across to 8,000. Which I, is unusual because yeah. on most scooters that you see, especially those with expansion chambers, you could pick a number and you say, oh, this peaks at, yeah. and for example, a France Speed race exhaust would pick, peak at 8,250 RPM or thereabouts. Yeah. For uh, maybe 200 revs. Yeah. Well. yeah. So to have one that... Um, for 2,000. 2,000 yeah. RPM, it's holding what sort of power? Well, it's the... The one that you've tested um, has dynoed at about 34.9 horsepower. It'd be nice to say it's 35. So all but 35. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, you've got to be realistic and say it as it is. 34.9. Yeah, it is yeah. 34.9. And 34.9 at 6,000, and it's got a table top, top to the curve, and it still holds that to around about 8,000. But even when you get to 8,000, it doesn't completely nosedive and drop like a like a brick as it were it it really peters out very slowly so you can if you wish you can rev onto 82 and 84 and 85 yeah and the report and the feedback we've had from the people who've rode it have come back and said it's just really really long in the gears although it's got a close ratio of five speed gearbox it you can, and the reason why it's long in the gears because you can start the gear so early and you can then finish it really late if you wish yeah so you can go from 1500 rpm in top all the way to 8700 rpm at the end of the rev range and that means that from one gear you can go from 15 mile per hour to 87 mile per hour and that is a really long working range. And there's something further that I would describe that I went round um, a few S bends in mm. third gear yeah. and I found that that third gear gave me complete control over the motor but at a very fast pace so the gear had some the gear had some length and some legs to it yeah. but it had a very sporty feel about it in third compared to a cruising feel in fifth is that something that other users have, 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 it, have it is. fed it's back to you? The, the T52 variant if we had about 25 people test ride it there was probably 20 21 of them who came back and said that ticks every single box there was three or four of the guys who was i would call racer types who have got quite heavily tuned engines at 
I've dumped them actually as it happens because otherwise I wouldn't know them. Mm. And I've got tuned RBs with expansions on and one guy's got a Super Monza, it's kicking out about 33 horsepower. For those kind of guys, they've come back after testing the 252 and said, it does everything really, really well, but I'd just like it to be a little bit more sportier or a little bit more fruitier. Yeah. And I think what we've achieved now with the 265 is we've given that option for those guys to put a grin on their face because it's got the option to do that. And that is user selectable. It's a bit like a, a sport switch in a modern car. And what you can effectively do there is you can move on to, you can select a lower gear and you're in sport mode effectively. And if you're the type of guy who just likes to cruise, then just chuck it in a top gear or chuck it in a tall gear or do a, like you would do in a diesel and just short shift it through the box, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And you'll be sat at fifth at 30 mile per hour and you can still wind it on and have good results from it. Uh, in terms of price, what would a customer expect to pay for the complete package? And outside of the engine, I, th I think there are a couple of extra ancillaries you include. Yeah, it, the whole engine package is um, 5995 mm -hmm. it's not changed from what the 252 version pricing was and what we've also done now is we've included yet another extra item um, because we've now included an easy clutch um, come up with a um, really good um, gear gearing system for the um, clutch mechanism which then works hand in hand with the extra long lever the super light cable and a clutch lever kit that we've put together which makes all of the system we haven't just stopped at doing what we've done in the engine case. We've we've gone through the whole system and put it together as a complete package that will come with the engine. So you've got that extra now, and it also comes with a rear shock, the rear hub, the wheel, um, Dunlop tyre, um, engine bolt and offset cone kit, air filter and bellows, and the exhaust system complete, kickstart. Um, the whole package, even even including a uh, set of mounts for the CDI and the coil. So true plug and play. Yeah, it just you know just offer it up, slide the bolt through and slide the shock on and connect up your wires. And now um, we've obviously had lots of delays because of COVID and yeah. you're down on manpower. You are just one man. So if somebody was to um, you know be interested in this and yeah. you know go on your waiting list, how long how long would that waiting list extend? It's got quite big now because um, we're behind with work. Well, we, um, I, uh, I'm behind with work. I do have a couple of helpers who help me out and uh, very thankful for, for those guys who help me with the development and the testing. You know, I've got, got Eric Cope who does the sprinting with me and he's helps me out a lot. And I've got my old friend Rob Shaw and uh, he does bits, does bits and pieces for me. And, you know, I'm really thankful for those guys for the effort they've put in and, and with the assistance that they've offered. As it stands at the moment, engine number one, which you've just tested there, is complete and almost ready to go out to its customer but I've already received orders for another 24 so I'm up to 25 and I've almost had to draw a line under it because with the best will in the world if I produced one engine per month which is going some alongside the other work that I have to carry out we're looking at at least 24 months there so I think we've got a little bit of the Rolex watch syndrome that's going on <laughs> there where um, the selected few will get the name down and get in quickly kind of thing and they'll receive them and the other guys unfortunately are going to have to wait it's um yeah you know, it is what it is I, you know i can only do what i can do yeah okay any other information you want to add or, or does that give you um everybody a, a chance to get you know all the information that you want to put out there i think the only other information is is like um for example this this engine number one um it's only received a, a crankshaft stroke length change so effectively all the parts are all pre-tested and we've already got you know, two and a half thousand miles under our belt on the 252 variant. But the reason why you've just test rode this today is, is we didn't want the 265 to go out to its customer untested. Um, we wanted to fit it into a chassis and we wanted to go out on the road and put some miles on it, check it all functions fine and the jetting's good and it converts to a good operating temperature range and that the final drive gearing is suited to the new power and the new torque figure that it's got. And that has actually uh, brought out some, um, I'm not going to say issues, it's brought out um, some additional information Additional information for us and we've found that we can gear the motor slightly differently now as a result of the extra power and the extra torque that it's got and the extension of the rev range that it's now got with the, with the new spec we've done on it 
and you know it's it's converted to a really good package it's um it surprised us really now with and i think what it's the biggest thing it's allowed us to do is is give those test riders in the past who just wanted that little bit more get up and go i think we've just ticked that final box now excellent excellent well thank you very much for your time and best luck with the new venture yeah cheers, cheers daryl